of you here. Uh, tell me that you can see my face. You can actually see my face, but you should be able to see full PowerPoint slides. You should be able to hear my voice, and I'm hoping that that's all working. So let me just see here if this is working or not. Uh, can you guys hear me? That's the question. Can't hear. Okay, hang on one second. Let's try this. Here we go. Let me just try clicking the right thing. Give me a second. We're on multiple platforms. All right, let's try that. Okay, how about this? Can you hear me now? And that should be better. Um, tell me that you can see my slides. You can see webcam. Yay, we got it together. Okay, thank you on multiple platforms that we're on. Thank you to all of you for joining us. So you can see my slides. You can see my webcam. You can hear my voice. And I guess that's all we need. We're going to get going. Feel free to ask questions at any time. We are going to go ahead. I'll probably take some breaks and that kind of stuff. Hi, Dr. Noli. Hi to hundreds of you that are on. Uh, it's so great to see so many of you. Um, we have got dentists, physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, others uh, that can inject there as well. So we're going to go to this topic and we're going to show you what's new. A couple of really new new things uh, here too. But so many of you, I wish I could name you all by name, uh, but there are way too many of you. But it's really great to have all of you on here. And I know a lot of you are interested. You love the aesthetic part, but we're also going to go ahead and talk about the therapeutic part and see how the two go together because you're going to be able to make people look great and feel great. And I think that is the best part of the whole thing. So welcome to this program. Let me just get a few other buttons going. And there we go. We're going to go quick. We've got a lot of videos to show you. So anything on your end uh, that you can go ahead and, uh, you know, either put on pause so you get the best experience, that would be great. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll see you a little bit later. Um, I'll come back on, but I'm going to turn my webcam off right now so we'll see all of you later um, on the webinar platform so that we can get the best experience there as well so with that let's get going because we really do have a lot to go ahead and cover and my name is Dr. Lewis Maltzmacher there's my email there's the AFE's email the American Academy of Facial Aesthetics lots of other uh, websites that you can go ahead and go visit there at your leisure if you want to take a picture of this and that would be just great uh, but you know and I'll talk about it if you train but True mirrors. I'm going to talk about a lot of different things in this picture, in this uh, in this website. So grab uh, grab it real quick, and then we will go back and uh, show you what is going on here. But please follow us at Facial Aesthetics on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And AFE Live Patient CME Certification Training, AFETraining.com is where you will find information about all of the AFE courses. Level 1, uh, Foundational Botox and Fillers. Level 2, Advanced. Level 3, Master. Um, Frontline TMJ and oral facial pain. That's going to be a lot of our topic tonight. But how we how we uh, also mix it with the aesthetic part and a lot of other things. But we're going to talk about fillers and PDO threads, and especially the PDO threads. We're going to show you how to use that for trigger points, and that's going to be new to a lot of you. Here are the upcoming uh, courses with the AFE in the next few months. They do have a special, only 10 packages available that will get a combination of AFE membership, additional discounts, but also gold or higher, you can use AAFE 500, save an additional $500 off for gold packages or higher these are just you buy a bunch of courses you save a bunch of money pretty much and you can see we're we're in over 50 locations all around the united states and Canada a little bit there as well so you can certainly see what is coming up but tuition is going to go up like everything else else is going up in the rest of the world so uh you know all of that as well too so um here we go take a picture of this if you want you can see uh the course is coming up but we've got lots of courses most of the level ones that you see listed here if there's a one by that city is followed by a tmj oral facial pain so if you want that too but save the 500 dollars off grab it before tuition goes up uh in a couple of days and you'll also get membership we're about to launch brand new forums uh so many different things that we have got uh really amazing and, and we're really excited about a few new projects that you are all going to see pretty soon but take real live patient CME training. Don't learn it from someone you just met on Instagram. That doesn't mean anything to any kind of uh, a licensing board. If you ever do get into trouble, um, that is that that really is kind of meaningless uh, there as well here. So let me go ahead and uh, and let's just get this going. Hang on. 
got a couple of things going. Oh, this is exciting too. Next, uh, no, not next week, two weeks. We are going to go ahead and do a live virtual training on. You folks have been asking about it for months at this point. Uh, and, uh, and we only give this like twice a year. So if you want this, it's time to get it. This is a live virtual training, August 17th. Register right now for $79, uh, which is a deep, deep discount, uh, as many of you know here. And that is going to be uh, for, um, this is going to be micro Botox. You, you want it? You want to you learn how to do lip flip uh, correctly? This is your chance to learn it. And uh, this will be in a couple of weeks. And it's, it's unbelievable, really. And it's called uh, the Micro Botox Precision Lip Flip Plus. And the reason for that is because you'll see what that plus means uh, in the, when you get to this. It's not just micro Botox, but the lip flip is one of the most misunderstood. And really, it's one of those that you either have uh, a success or it's a disaster. So you don't want to be on the disaster side of this here, too. I just got to plug one thing in for these nice people, and then we are going to be good to go here. Oh, uh, for this. Okay, hang on a second for me. Let me just see where this is. We're just gonna have to, we're just gonna have to go for it here in just a second. Okay, here we go. We're gonna, we are ready to go here we go. okay let's get going we got a lot to do here so um let's go ahead and get going here for this but if you want this first 200 spots get it at 79 and then it goes up here so let's get going we got a lot to do here dream practice with injectables and that's why so many of you really love injectables here uh as well and that is purely because um, it's a, it literally is a dream practice and aesthetics is a great equalizer. I love saying this. It doesn't matter what you have got healthcare professional. You can all be a master injector. It doesn't matter the letters after your name. And the best thing about it is you can really get paid what you are worth. And that is really unusual in the healthcare field. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter if you're an MD, DDS, DMD, uh, DO, NPP, uh, PARN, uh, or, you know, an esthetician in those states that allow it there too so i mean there are lots of them that allow it there and a few members in 2022 were up 30 to 48 percent i would guess that most of you who have any other kind of practice were not having that kind of success and injectables is still flying high with all the craziness in the world it's just incredible what injectables are doing here i mean it really is really really incredible uh for that but stress has really changed uh facial aesthetics there is no question about that. Um, uh, you know, it has created these huge masseters, more clenching, more grinding. The world's a crazy place, and you've got all these things happening here. Um, it's time to give these people relief and make them look better at the same time, and that's a nice thing. So let's start off with botulinum toxin, and then we'll just call it Botox for short, but there are Botox, Xeomin, Juveau, Dysport. There are different formulations of this. These four don't differ that much. They will last anywhere up to three to four months. Uh, that, depending, there is a newer toxin out there that is claiming six months. We haven't exactly seen six months just yet have definitely seen better, but not necessarily have seen six months uh, out of it just yet. But either way, the neurotoxins are the way to go. And that really goes a long way, by the way, in helping with uh, the, the therapeutic part of this. Migraines, headaches, TMJ, oral facial pain, all those different things. Because, and this is what the AFE is built on, by the way, anatomy, safety, and technique. That's what we're going to talk about here as we show you the different things. But let's start off with toxin. And the way toxin works is you inject the botulinum toxin Botox into muscles and it attaches to that neuromuscular junction there. And what happens with that neuromuscular junction is the toxin will go ahead and block that, uh, you know, from the neuron to the, the muscle will block that transmission. So if you inject some Botox into a muscle, it won't put it to sleep completely, it will reduce the intensity of, of contraction. If you go ahead and inject a lot of it into a muscle, and dosaging is a real key for sure, if you inject a lot of it into a muscle, then it will put that muscle to sleep for about 
three months. So that's pretty much up to three months, four months, again, depending on the toxin, depending on the dosaging and everything else. Now, certainly some of the muscles that we're going to treat, we don't want to put to sleep for three. Uh, we don't want to put to sleep completely. We just want to reduce the intensity of contraction there for that. And these are all these muscles in the face, by the way. A lot of these muscles are all about uh, the aesthetics, but most of them are also about the therapeutics and the pain and that kind of thing and, and, and taking care of it, especially the bigger ones like the frontalis glabellar, uh, between the eyes, the forehead, around the eyes, temporalis, masseter. Those are all really involved in pain. Now, what, what are we so concerned about muscles with when it comes to pain? Well, here's the reason why. And we're going to talk specifically about myofascial pain. Myalgia is just a sore muscle. Um, uh, spasm, trismus, myositis, uh, that you know what those things are. Myofascial pain is what we are talking about, as you're going to see when we talk about trigger points. But why, why are we so into this? And by the way, this is across every oral facial pain residency, post-dental school, there's two-year uh, po oral facial pain residencies. Most of the studies suggest that eight, up to 85% of TMJ oral facial pain disorders are muscle related. And one out of six patients in your office have oral facial pain and some muscle dysfunction from a uh, Journal of the ADA study in 2015 uh, for all of that. So that's a big number. Now, a lot of dentists on here think that it comes from, you know, the, 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 uh, the occlusion, the way the teeth come together from orthodontics. That's not what the studies say at all. I'm not saying that's not important. You got to take care of that too, but go to the muscle first. That's where most of the pain is coming from here. And I actually wrote an article a couple of years ago. Look at this, February, 2020. Uh, you know what happened in the next month that threw the world into turmoil uh, for, for uh, a couple of years. Maybe we're still suffering from it uh, as well here. But I wrote this article, the TMJ nurse will see you now. This is really, and, and we've got lots of you of all, like I said, all different healthcare professionals on. But this is a message to the dentists here who think that they have owned TMJ for a long time here. When I can tell you right now, every single nurse, nurse practitioner, physician that's got a med spa, PA that's got a med spa, is treating TMJ. And all they're doing is injecting the master and temporalis. And guess what? The patients are having a lot of success. The patients are feeling a lot better. So if you're not going to treat it as a dentist, believe me, there are going to be a lot of other people that are going to treat it uh, for this. So let me just show you our first patient here. Um, so we're going to show a video now. Let's show you our first patient who's only going to get a Botox treatment. And, and you'll hear the patient. You'll have to, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and see. Here we go. Yoda is our patient today. And Yoda is getting uh, treatment. So, I mean, what we would call baby Botox, but she's getting it for therapeutic purposes here. Tell us a little a little bit about your headaches, you know. Um, so I clench a lot and I get a lot of tension headaches and stress headaches um, throughout my jaw and my temples. And what happens in the morning? You told me what I wake what up happens. with headaches yeah. every day. And where I'm where clenching. is the primary uh, area of your headaches when Mostly you wake up? Mostly in my jaw here. Right in her jaw back here. Now, if you take a look at her, um, take a look here. I'm going to reposition, make sure we get both cameras straight on. You can see her face is a little bit and asymmetrical. So you can see that her right side, which is on the left side of your screen, is just a little bit bigger. Um, even And take a look straight at the camera here. Um, take a look at her eyes. Her eyes a little bit more open on her left side as opposed to her right side. So she's got stress all through that face just by looking at her face. These are the things that we teach in the AAF, in the AAFE all the time is how to read faces there. Um, but that is really can tell you a lot, just her address. But certainly with her history, um, that kind of tells you where to go. So you can see we've got her all marked up. We've got all the Botox ready to go uh, to go ahead and treat uh, her headaches, TMJ, migraines, all comor comorbid uh, conditions here in her case. But the, and the, so she's going to get a little bit of an aesthetic effect there too. Not that she necessarily uh, needs it there, but just raise your eyebrows for everybody so they can kind of see as hard as you can. Raise your eyebrows. Realize. So you can see she's got uh, she's got movement there. Uh, just relax. We're not doing this for preventative aesthetics. We are doing it for therapeutics. Make a really really mean face. Mean face. Ooh, baby, that is really a mean face there. Uh, but that by itself, it can go ahead and give her some uh, give her some uh, uh, some stress and.
and that can give her some of her headaches uh, there as well. And she is marking up that area uh, for that. And she does eat crow's feet, that she doesn't need, but we are going to give her some uh, masseter, and you can go ahead for that masseter and show how uh, they've already uh, gone ahead and uh, mark the masseter. Uh, anterior and posterior borders of the masseter, as you can see there. We're going to do the temporalis, but we're not going to do it through that headband. Then the headband will come off. Interesting on her, we identified two spots. Uh, not just uh, the anterior temporalis, which is the spot that mostly gets treated, but we uh, actually also identified a really good uh, you know, part of the muscle in the posterior temporalis, so we're going to inject it there, and that's pretty unusual. You usually don't see a lot of that. It's usually anterior and middle temporalis, but we actually could really see, and she actually feels that area on the post here. So you can start delivering it uh, there, Megan. We are joined by uh, Megan, who is full-time faculty at the AAFE RRN, and Jill, who's our full-time NP faculty there as well. And she is using a Comfortox needle here. You can see she is using a Comfortox syringe. You can see that we have got all kinds of cameras on her. You can get closer on the cameras there uh, for that if you can. We're all going to kind of move in and really get a part of that part of that treatment there, so you can really see it very, very well. Okay, how you doing, Yona? Good. All right, good. Yeah, she's doing really I'm good. good. Uh, skin is very well cleaned beforehand. She did not have any kind of topical anesthetic on there uh, at all. Everything we teach in the AAFE, Megan is doing, and she teaches on her own how to how to really hold these muscles. Um, to really go ahead and get the best effect. It's knowing the anatomy and knowing exactly where you go. All right, we've got both of them. We're going to do the masseters together here on the count of three. Uh, one, two, three. And that is delivered really quickly, exactly where we went, uh, right in the middle of that masseter there. So now we're going to go ahead and treat the uh, anterior temporalis. Both of you feel that real well. For that, I'll take a look. Uh, we'll do that on the count of, well, you guys count down yourselves. What? Five here, ten oh, here. Yeah, ten there and five on the on the posterior. Okay, so whenever you guys are ready, you can go ahead and deliver that at the same time. One, two, three. There you go. Good. Are you giving all ten on that? Yep. Um, oh, you, you, got, five, you yeah. got another five. Oh, they put okay. all in one syringe. Okay. Really good, good. Now, they've kind of got a dig here, and this is something that's hard to see on camera, but just uh, open and close a few times and clench so they can find that big bulk of the posterior temporalis. And there it goes on that side, and you can see there it goes on that side. So now, that is it. Yona, and Yona, by the way, is one of the people behind the camera here filming these procedures. First time she's getting it. Yona, how was it being on this side of the camera? Uh, more relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> It's more stressful taking uh, taking the video than actually being in the video. So you think great, Yona, and we will evaluate this in uh, in you know about a week's time. And not hard, not hard to find Yona since she works here. Um, so that uh, we'll see how it goes, and then you'll give us a report and see how this goes, right? Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great job, Megan. Great job, Jill. Bye. Okay. Great job, AFB. We'll talk to you all soon. Alrighty, so that's just a straight, what I call point and shoot uh, Botox treatment for migraines. I mean, she's, she goes to some of the Cleveland Clinic neurologists who uh, treat her for migraines and they either give them too much. I'm not knocking them. I mean, it's just, you know, they're, they're not there to balance really the aesthetic part of it. They're there just to go ahead and really treat the pain part of it. And uh, we've talked to them a number of times. And so we've uh, taken over her Botox treatment uh, for that. So, I mean, that's what you're looking at there. But let's talk about trigger points a little bit here. And uh, these are the big muscles, obviously, that we are really going ahead and treating here the masseter and temporalis but those are not the only muscles all the muscles you saw is treat on yona those are the muscles those are all part of the fda protocol for chronic migraine and and pain and that kind of stuff but here's what i want to show you i want to show you an amazing patient uh that was treated at an oral facial pain uh clinic and listen to her story she has had dental pain that wasn't really coming from teeth so listen to her story, and this is really what oral facial pain and trigger points is all about. Now we're going to go in and show you a bunch of trigger points. So here we go. I 
Hang on, let me see if I can get this to work here. Oh, it's all, all works so well when we try it out beforehand. There we go. Here we go. So I'm, I'm recording this, and do I have your permission to use this for teaching purposes? Yes, you do. Okay, so can you tell me what brought you into the clinic today? Um, I came in because I've been having some pain in my jaw for over seven months. And... silver out of my teeth to put in the white stuff and I had to have some root canals. Why did you have to have, when you said you had to have root canals, was that because there was, with the teeth had large uh, decay or why did you have to have root canals? Well, the, the silver, underneath the silver was large decay. Okay. So they did have to do some root, can root canals from that and um, the pain just kept getting worse. So they did another root canal. From that, um, I had more pain in my jaw, and so they decided to do another root canal, and the pain was still there, so they decided to do yet another root canal, and the pain was still there. So they decided it was TMJ, and they made a night guard, and I had some TENS treatments, two a day for the whole summer, and then they put me on medication. Who's, who's they put you on medication? The dentist put me on some medication. Do you remember what the medication was? Um, he had me on Vicoprofen. And then he finally said that he couldn't do anything else for me and sent me to a pain specialist. And I took matters into my own hands and decided to see a sinus doctor because I didn't want to end up on Oprah, addicted to pain medicine. <laughs> and so um, a sinus doctor said it wasn't in my sinuses. And so I went to the pain being specialist, and he put me on Topamax, thinking it was a nerve thing, and referred me here. And when did you start the Topamax? Um, about two and a half weeks ago. And did that make any difference? No, it just made me forget things. Okay. And what did we just do? Um, put some funky spray on it. Was it hot or cold? It was really cold. And what was your pain before we did the spray? It was a four or a five. A constant four or five for seven months. Where's the pain? It's a zero. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I know that probably wasn't the best, but the point is well made. Here she had all this treatment for teeth that were not the problem, and the real problem really were uh, the muscles. And what he sprayed down there was something called ethyl chloride, just to kind of freeze the muscles a little bit and get rid of that pain cycle. And all of a sudden, her teeth, her phantom teeth, uh, pain went away. So let me introduce you, if you're not avail if you're not aware of these things called trigger points in muscles. And what they are is you're going to push on the trigger point in a muscle, and it's going to refer pain somewhere else, not underneath the muscle. The muscle may be sore, but it's going to refer pain somewhere else else and that really is what a trigger point is and this is not a new concept this is 50 60 years old janet Travell, md wrote a classic textbook and you all have trigger points all over the body and by the way this is a trigger point is this if you've ever gone for a massage and you know they're working on your back working on your back and all of a sudden they hit one that one spot that they really dig in and all of a sudden you hear feel a shooting pain not even where where they're they're uh you know, digging in. It's all of a sudden like, you know, on a, all the way up your spine, all the way up your back. And it's like, ooh, ah, oh, that feels so good. That That's the release of a trigger point. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a needle and Botox to really go ahead and calm these muscles down. And these are classic trigger points. Again, I didn't make these up. These have been around for years. And this is exactly what you do. And the way to go ahead and find these trigger points is to do palpation testing. And man, again, it's just an evaluation and diagnosis, but palpation with your finger 
finger, push on it for about six to 10 seconds, 48 pounds of pressure, four to eight, not 48, four to eight pounds of pressure. And you can give people, if I can replicate that play, pain of a trigger point, I can go ahead and inject that trigger point. It's a different kind of injection as you're gonna see, but the trapezius has got, if you push on that shoulder muscle, all of a sudden take everywhere where it's bright red, those are the classic trigger points and you can get uh, little parts of it on different uh, chains, neurological chains. This isn't acupuncture, it's probably related to it somehow, um, but this is straight trigger point therapy that's been around for years. Uh, dry needling is done by, um, by physical therapists because they can't inject anything. But when you add Botox to the mix, and we've been doing this and teaching this for 15 plus years already, it's a whole different experience. So you've got all, you've got a whole bunch of muscles in the face and neck and head and neck, by the way. I'm just showing you a few of them. But masseter muscle, this is the problem that she had. She had masseter muscle trigger points, which mimicked tooth pain. And if it's the uh, superficial masseter, that's going to go ahead and and mimic lower teeth, the deep masseter, upper teeth. I mean, it's really incredible, these pathways for this. I mean, many of you who are dentists have had patients that have had pain in the tooth. You take an x-ray, you tap on it, there's nothing going on there. And if you would check the muscles, and now let me tell you, you that the hundreds of thousands of endos are done every single year that where the tooth is not the source of the pain, but it's coming from muscle, and that, that's a result of a number of studies uh, that say the same thing. Temporalis is a fascinating muscle, that big muscle on the side of your head. The anterior temporalis goes to the anterior teeth and everywhere in between. It can mimic sinus uh, pain. It can mimic a lot of different kinds of pain uh, on uh, patients. As you go more posterior, it goes to the posterior teeth. So it's really amazing what we can do. But let's go ahead and take a look at a patient. I'm going to show you some of her trigger point treatment here as well. Take a look at her face. What do you notice about her face? If you really look at an AFI, we really teach you how to go ahead and read faces here. And if you take a look on one side of her face, her masseter is bigger than on the other side of her face. Take a look at her eyes. They're not very wide open. This is a patient that has got classical migraines and, you know, her eyes are not as open as they should be because they're pretty much a lot under stress. She's, you know, typically got a lot of pain on a regular basis here. This is a face in pain. So, again, I'm going to kind of jump because I could speak in two hours just on her case and the evaluation and everything, but I wanted to just show you the trigger point part of it with the use of Botox. So I'm going to show you this first uh, this first short video, which is going to be trigger points in the masseter and I think the temporalis and then the rest of her uh, regular botulinum toxin treatment. And then I'll show you one in her shoulder there as well. Here we go. Just so you know where the trigger point, you know, trigger point therapy is. So here we go. Right here. And you're going to feel a little pinch and I can kind of hold this a little bit more easily right there. Get right into that muscle and I'm going to give deliver a little bit of this so that'll get her numb for a few seconds and we are going to go ahead and now start our procedure and this is the therapy that trigger point is the therapy and I you know I'm, I'm really getting some resistance here and I'm, I'm literally pushing hard to kind of break through and I, now that I've broken through I want to go ahead and finish up and clean up this trigger point so everything it's nice and smooth over here. I feel a little bit going this way and I'm just going to change hands here and do the same kind of thing. She's feeling, I feel some popping. She's probably feeling it too a little bit and she felt that a little bit for sure. I can give her the rest of this mixture right there and make sure that we are good and that is feeling pretty good. So now I'm kind of gliding through just about everything and that is good. And we're going to make sure that we get that. And you can see people actually do bleed here a little bit. So, she, you know, we've got, we didn't get a lot of bleeding on anything else. As a matter of fact, we didn't get hardly anything on this one. This one's going to be a little different than just about any other one. But it's fairly stopped there already. And she's doing great. And now let's just deliver the masseter on this side. And then she'll pretty much be done right here. And we'll get her all cleaned up. And that's the botulinum toxin injection on this side. Now we'll get her cleaned up and let's do the rest of the uh, botulinum toxin injections here. Now let's go to the rest of her botulinum toxin injections. And again, we're still using Xeomin. We've used it for all of this, less expensive than Botox, and we'll do the job 
just as good as anything else. And just raise your eyebrows for me. There you go. And, you know, I didn't mark her because I know exactly where to go to give her a botulinum toxin. This needs some training, so this is not something you're going to do without training here. But all I want is to spread some of this because she gets these headaches, and she mentioned, be, you know, uh, behind the eyes, you know, in this whole area. So this is going to really relieve these muscles here. So you're going to feel a little pinch right here. And these are all little pinches as we go ahead and distribute, in her case, about six units of botulinum toxin. And that's her. That's not anybody else. You need to know the anatomy for sure to go ahead and do this and know exactly where you're putting this botulinum toxin and exactly what it's for. And her her case, it certainly is not for wrinkles, but it certainly will prevent any wrinkles from happening, which is always a good thing at any age, uh, because there are people that are her age that actually do get uh, botulinum toxins so that they'll never have a wrinkle. In her case, it is really going to help with her headache and her whole headache situation right here. Now we're going to go to these, and that was the frontalis muscle up here. This is the glabellar region, which is the procerus muscle. Make a mean face there again, and you can see that procerus muscle come right out and these are small little corrugator muscles so we don't need to really give her much there just relax you're going to feel a little pinch right here and sorry about that you're doing just great there lizzie everything i'm doing the way i am holding these muscles is all very strict strategic. So you really need to know the anatomy, what you're putting in, where the muscles are exactly, so that you can do a good job for this patient, get rid of their headaches and their facial pain in this situation, or and deliver the great aesthetics, because the last thing you want to do is go ahead and give them some botulinum toxin in, you know, too much in the wrong muscle will get rid of their headaches, but it may not feel too good to them because they won't look good, and that's the problem. So you want to really prevent all those things from happening. Turn your head towards me just a little bit more. A couple more injections, and again, I'm giving this to the lateral bicularis oculi right here for one reason, because she feels that some of her headache feels like it's coming right behind her eyes, and we've identified this in the AFE. This muscle has been uh, the area that we treat, and it really goes ahead and will really help her. So she's going to feel a quick little injection right here, and that's going to inject that and turn towards me, and the rest of that is going to go right here, and the, all this together is really going to help her entire headache situation. So oh, you live to tell about this here, Liz, and that's great. So she really is a trooper. I, it was a lot of work and, you know, felt a little pain, but this is going to really start to feel really good to you. Um, the big instruction is don't touch your face. Don't manipulate any of the areas uh, that you've got. I mean, you can put on some light makeup uh, right here. I don't want you to move any of this botulinum toxin, and we gave you something called Xeomin here. So I don't want you to move any of it around. We want it to stay right there, and we'll take a look at you in a week and see how you do. Okay. Okay. <music> All right, so now let me go ahead and show you the trigger point injection on the trapezius on there. Here we go. Let's now go ahead and deliver these trigger point injections on Liz here. And we're going to start with this one in her right shoulder right here, here. And what I've got is a combination of lidocaine and botulinum toxin. In this case, it is Xeomin, and uh, the dentist can get it from StatDDS, which is the recognized distributor for Xeomin in dentistry. And otherwise, you can get it from the MERS company if you're a physician. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a try. And Xeomin is just a Botox alternative uh, for a lot less money. I use Xeomin a lot in trigger points because it is less expensive for the exact same uh, botulinum toxin and the exact same result here. So I'm using these Comfortox needles and syringes. And this is a, uh, a 3cc, although I'm only using a half a cc of a mixture of botulinum toxin, delivering 10 units of this in here. And then I've got lidocaine in here and that's gonna make it feel a little bit better. So you're gonna feel a little pinch in here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for, you know, that trigger point in this muscle is gonna feel like a, a very fibrous tissue. And and every time I feel it, I'm going to try to break it up with the tip of this needle, which will act as almost like a mini scalpel. So 
That's the therapy. The botulinum toxin, the zeman in this case, is really there just to go ahead and deliver it to the muscle so the muscle can calm down for a period of three months. So you're gonna feel a little pinch in here. You might feel a little pinch. Sorry about that, Liz. And I can kind of feel it and she can kind of feel it in there. How you doing, Liz, all right? And if you can see, watch my Comfort Tox needle here. I'm gonna go ahead and just deliver a little bit of this mixture right into that area. Area, and that lidocaine will start to numb up that area right there. I'm just going to let it sit there for a few seconds, and this way, uh, you know, the area can start to get numb. And then I'm going to go looking around a little bit, and it's kind of like, you know, an under in the muscle surgery here. And again, if you feel anything, you let me know. And I'm going to just go ahead and really start to break up that trigger point um, in this muscle here. And I can really feel, and do you feel that a little bit, Liz? Yeah. Okay, so now when she feels that, that is a good thing because I'm right in that trigger point. I'm going to deliver a little bit more lidocaine. All you have to do is take some deep breaths, and I'm going to work my way in this. And this gives her, you know, kind of like a, uh, you know, it's, she's going to feel a lot of relief in just a few minutes here. And that's going to really feel good. Now, again, you need to know your anatomy. You need to know where all the muscle is and everything else in here. And if you caught it, and I'll do it on the next one so you can see it a little bit better. I did a little aspirating before we went ahead and uh, did anything to make sure I'm safe. But these are very safe areas for me here. And all I'm doing is breaking up these trigger points. And I can really feel it in this area. How you doing there, Liz? Okay. She's hanging in there. And that should start to feel better and better. And if you could see the drag that I'm getting on here, and I'm really pushing on here, I finally kind of break through that fibrous tissue. That's that trigger point in there. And now it's kind of going to get through that one. And you saw that little jerk. And that was exactly what I'm doing. And now I'm just going to go this way, going to deliver a little bit more of this. And as I'm doing that, I'm just giving lidocaine into different parts of the muscle and also delivering the zeamin into it so that that muscle will calm down for a period of three months. But now, it, you know, I, it's not, I'm out of liquid, but I can still go ahead and feel everything. And that actually looks really good. So you did really good on that first one. Take a deep breath. And I know that, uh, you know, it's not always that pleasant here. And... We can go ahead, I'm just gonna pull this down. You can see there can be a little bit of bleeding, but here in this case, there's no bleeding at all. And now we're gonna go ahead and go to this uh, this one in the splenius capitis right in here. How you doing, okay? okay? All right, we'll show you a splenius capitis in the future sometime, but we do a bunch of neck muscles. I'm actually sure I'm gonna show you splenius capitis and this with PDO threads. Wait till you see that coming up uh, for that. All right, but here you can see her before and after at rest. Look, it's a different face, and you can go ahead and see that her uh, her masseters are not as active. They've calmed down. She looks better. It's a better-looking face. You can see her smiling. She's smiling better. She is out of pain for the first time in her life, uh, in her short life. She started, well, at least for many years, she started having these... Um, this pain when she was like 16 and here she was like 22 23 for that so that is really a lot uh for all of that it really depends on the patient the ratio of botulinum toxin to lidocaine how much how much uh botulinum toxin does she get the AFE is not a cookbook. We don't, we don't, if you want to, if you want to be, a, if you want to be an injector that has a lot of problems, uh, do cookbook. We don't do cookbook. Every patient is evaluated very specifically for uh, what she needs. I mean, you know, a trapezius can get anywhere from 10 to 50 uh, units of uh, botulinum toxin. And the same thing with a master, a temporalis. Everybody is different. And that takes training and experience and really understanding how to do a proper proper, proper uh, you know, diagnosis and evaluation. And not only that, it's about, I mean, every, I mean, it, it just drives us nuts um, when, you know, it, whatever I gave her does not apply at all to your patient, not at all to your patient there for that because everyone's different. Your patient and my patient doesn't wear the same uh, glass subscription, eyeglass subscription, right? Everybody is different. Depends on muscle mass, muscle intensity, right? Uh, the other muscles around it, elevators, depressors, how everything works together. One thing I will say is generally men 
masseters and temporalis. Uh, when you treat one masseter, you're going to treat the other masseter pretty much with the same dosage or very close to. Same thing with temporalis. Those are the only two sets of muscles that really work together when they work and you've got to be treated. And then, by the way, I mean, this is, you know, we'll also teach you how to properly code it in our, in our courses as well because this is real medical treatment. And, you know, treatment includes botulinum toxin trigger points. Many of these patients also get fillers and PDO threads and different kinds of things. We're actually going to talk about fillers and PDO threads when it comes to uh, treating, uh, uh, you know, migraines, headaches, TMJ, and that kind of stuff. So that's going to be coming up uh, for that. What are the syringes that we need that we use? And here you can kind of get an idea of the, uh, the patient fee for this. We'll talk more about patient fees or the impact on the practice later on with, uh, you know, getting Botox fillers, PDO threads into your practice there as well. Stat TDS, go to them for comfort tox syringes. We use the three, uh, three ML syringe. It's got a 22 gauge needle on it for the uh, trigger points for the regular Botox point and shoot injections. We just use the regular 30, 31 gauge. It's a miracle. These things are so sharp and so comfortable. And you can certainly see on the lower right hand side, right out of the package, what comes Comfort Tox looks like the sharper it is, the smoother it is, the more comfortable it is versus a very popular brand name right out of the package. All those blebs and all those, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, the bluntness of that, that hurts. And you want to be known as the most comfortable injector. And for trigger points, where you're literally using the needle as a tiny scalpel to break up that trigger point, the body heals up and all of a sudden, uh, if the pain goes away and you can get it to go away for a long time, partially, or, you know, or permanently uh, for all of that. So that certainly helps. I can show you patient after patient. We're going to show you more patients, but this is a great patient by our good friend and uh, AFI member, Dr. Paul Koch. And this, she happened to be a journalist. And what was interesting about her case is that, you know, she was a local journalist just doing the story, but then and realize how bad she needs it and all the problems that she has. And all of a sudden she is getting, uh, I mean, she has these massive masters, master clenching, broken teeth, you name it. I mean, it comes with a lot going on. Headaches, migraines, all comorbid with uh, TMJ and, uh, and oral facial pain and that kind of thing. And so you can see her at rest all the way to the left, uh, you know, right at the beginning of treatment. The middle is about three to four weeks later. Uh, masseters. It takes them a while to really, uh, you know, come to a normal size uh, for all of that. And then finally, all the way about six to seven weeks later, all the way to the right side of your screen. And that is the, she looks great. She feels great. You cannot beat that kind of a treatment there uh, for all of that. So let me go ahead and take a, just a few questions on that. And then we will go ahead uh, and move on. Um, what size needle? So it's a, the, the, for the trigger points, 3cc, 22 gauge for that. There's no real ratio between the botulinum toxin and the lidocaine. Uh, but we go ahead and pull up um, the botulinum toxin first. Then we pull up the lidocaine. Generally, it may be 0.5 ml of 1% to 2% lidocaine per trigger point. But you got to be careful. If it's a lot of trigger points, your lidocaine has got toxicity way before you'll get the Botox toxicity. So you've got to just, you know, know how many you're doing. Doing, uh, for all of that. There is no minimum. We do masseters with 10 units on each side with good results and 20, 30, 40, 50 on each side uh, with good results for all of that. And generally, it's going to take botulinum toxin, you know, uh, two to 10 days to kick in with this a little bit longer because these muscles are so big. Um, and then, uh, you know, they will ask that we tell the patients just like the companies tell the patients up to six months, right? I'm not, wait, 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 rewind. Up to three months. It's not going to last up to six months uh, for uh, for that, uh, for all of that. Training questions. All We got a whole bunch of training questions. It's all there. AVTraining.com. Congratulations to a few of you who have already gone ahead and grabbed some packages. You will save a lot. Yeah, some of you are saying, man, I'm going to save a ton of money. Absolutely, you've saved a ton just from these packages. But the difference is once it goes up, uh, it definitely is uh, going to save some money. All right, let's move on. Uh, dermal fillers. How does dermal fillers fillers go ahead and help us when it comes to uh, oral facial pain and pain? Well, something a lot of you don't re realize when it comes to dermal fillers. First of all, what are they? These are hyaluronic acid jelly materials that revolumize the 
face. So the people lose fat and collagen, and especially once they hit 35, like I said before, it's been way accelerated with all the stress and clenching that has had, had up. And people have up to five times uh, of more loss of collagen and fat and facial aging, um, you know, since with all the stress that's going on, uh, people are under. And the more you clench, the more you age, and the faster you age, because the more you lose collagen and fat in your face here, this is how we do it. We revolumize it with dermal fillers, and that's what they are. And again, that's not our main topic tonight, although I'm going to show you a little bit of this. And the most popular dermal fillers, as many of you know, is going to be, hang on, there's a list. Um, that's not all the dermal fillers, but these are some of the dermal fillers available in the U.S. at this time. Um, there are even more than this here, but these are the big ones. The Juvederm family, the Restylane family, uh, the MERS family, and the Prolenium family that you can get from Stat EDS, the last two uh, for that. All good dermal fillers, uh, except for one. They're all hyaluronic acid, the, that jelly, clear colorless gel uh, based for all of that. They will revolumize the face here. Now, why in the world are we talking about it when it comes to uh, oral facial pain? This is why. And people never make this connection, and I don't know why uh, for all of this. They do not make this connection here uh, when it comes to this. When you lose volume in the face and people start to age, guess what? Your muscles behave differently because the muscles have got fat underneath them, fat on top of them. There's a deep fat layer, there's a superficial fat layer, and especially that deep fat layer, and that's the one that really starts, uh, as you get old, that starts to go ahead and decay. That means the muscle loses its tone, the muscle doesn't have the foundation under it, and it works differently. And guess what? When it works differently, and many times has to work harder, then that is some of the source for oral facial pain. It certainly contributes to it. And this is something called myomodulation. This is a little advanced for some of you, but it is real and it is well studied uh, for all of these things. When you go ahead and replace the, the filler and you replace filler in, and replace volume in the face, especially if you're doing it underneath a muscle, you are going to go ahead and affect what is called that muscle's anchoring point. Muscles have an anchoring point, and it's just a matter of physics. There are elevator muscles, depressor muscles, and the way they work together and meet, some of them, there it's called an anchoring point. When you lose the fat underneath that muscle, that anchoring point shifts, that muscle has to work harder, that results in pain. So yes, when you replace filler, you can re really go ahead and help these patients quite a bit. And I'll show you, I'll, let me show you a little bit of some filler, uh, you know, filler placement. And then I'll show you the before and after, which you will not believe on this patient. And because she came in for oral facial pain, we gave her botulinum toxin. We, we gave her fillers. We're going to give her uh, also uh, PDO threads, which I'll show you. That'll be our next topic. But here we go. Let's go ahead. Let's roll this video here. And I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing. And this is a 27 gauge, one uh, half inch needle here. And that's all we need on her. Sometimes we use longer needles depending on the situation. That's where I want to end up. So I'm going to start right here. Get right underneath there, mid dermis. How do I know if I'm in mid dermis? Because I'm going to tent this up. I can see the outline of the needle. Put this back in there. Just going to start giving a little bit of an injection come out and I like to do as few punctures as possible. So I'm not gonna come all the way out. Now I'm gonna turn, cause I wanna fill up this side right here, come back up here, make sure I'm in the right plane, which is mid dermis. Go ahead and fill that up as I do a retrograde injection here. But now I wanna go back to the, almost the corner of the nose here. So I'm gonna really turn the tip of my needle, go back up into that area there and tent it up, make sure I'm where I'm at. Go ahead and put that back down and do a nice little thread of material as I pull all the way out. And you know, there, there are a lot of people that don't use Bellotero Balance for nasolabial folds, but in these kinds of nasolabial folds, where you have, don't have a lot of loss of volume, you can get a beautiful result with Bellotero Balance. So I use it a lot. 
especially because I can go in different planes of the tissue and especially like right here, I'm gonna be a little superficial as you're gonna see, and that's gonna really get rid of this little etched in line, which I can't do with any other dermal filler here. And you see, I'm gonna be a little bit more superficial where you can see the outline of that needle a little bit more, give her a little squeeze of material right here. So this is very versatile. And in this kind of a case where there isn't a lot of uh, volume loss and she does have a lot of these etched in lines, then this is a really, really good case for bellatoral balance in the nasolabial folds. And as you see, we're gonna get into the marionette lines. Open for me just a little bit. I'm gonna go in there again and just very, very gently make sure that this is nice and smooth here. And I'm gonna show you another little trick right here as well. I'm gonna use an agent called Arnica, Arnica gel. And you can get this on the Stat DDS emergency medical kit for your office. You can get this at health food stores. And this is an anti-bruising agent. It's a homeopathic anti-bruising agent that really works very, very nicely. But it also gives a little bit of, I can, I can almost literally feel the material through there to see if it's a little bit more lumpy. It just gives you a little bit of a better feel of the material. Open for me again. And that feels really nice. And it just gives you a little bit of a different texture. Open for me again, turn your head that way. And let's just go ahead and feel that. And that feels nice and smooth all the way around here. So that's her nasolabial full treatment. We're gonna go ahead and move on to her uh, oral commissures and a little bit of her marionette lines and then continue on with the lips. Now that we've done the nasolabial folds, let's go ahead and do these oral commissures and these radial lip lines here. And again, I'm still using Bellaterra Balance because this is perfect for this whole thing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and you can see where she's had this loss of volume. Even though she's numb, you can still see where she's had the loss of volume on both of these sides. This side definitely worse than this side, but I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna do a few things. I am going to go ahead and place some dermal filler across this right here and almost think of it like this. Um, I'm placing planks of dermal filler that's gonna support this tissue. Better than if you go in this way, I'm going to go ahead across this way and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the radial lip lines. You see, clinicians and practitioners want to go fill right underneath those radial lip lines, but the truth of the matter is um, that is a little bit of, you know, you get a really puffy lip and it's an unnatural look here. I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna go across just like that with this Bellaterra Balance. And again, I'm gonna stay fairly superficial, which I can only do with this. If I do that with Juvederm or Restylane, then I'm going to get something called that Tyndall bluish effect, which nobody likes. So we don't wanna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna separate her lips. And again, she is numb and she'll tell me if she feels anything here. And I'm gonna go right across there and tent that up so I know I'm mid-dermis again, and that's where I want to be as, as in this area right here, and give her a little bit of this. Now, this is going to pick up the sides of her lips so it's not as downturned by adding some volume here, too. With botulinum toxin, I'm going to give her some of that a little later on in another muscle that pulls down the corner of the lip, and those of you who have been trained know which muscle that is, and it's called the DAO. You can all look it up. So between the two, that's going to come out very nicely. You can see how this has already started to go straight across here. Open again for me. And again, not that Juvederm and Restylane, they're all good, and they're all work, they'll all work very nicely, but those 10 are thicker, and in this case would feel a lot lumpier to her. She actually said that she's had Juvederm. All right, so you just, uh, just, to, just to move on a little bit, take a look at her. She came in for facial pain, and she left pain-free and looking great because she had a mixture of botulinum toxin and dermal fillers and PEO threads, as you're going to see. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a different patient, but she had it all, regained the volume in her face, but that also reset her muscles, and that is a process, again, called myomodulation, and that's something that's really important. You've got, there. The, you know, when we talk about facial balance, it's not only about the aesthetic part of facial balance, it's also about, it's also about the support for the muscles and the ligaments and everything else in there so that they work properly, because as you saw before, up to 85%, of pain comes from muscles. It does not come from anything up, uh, 
anything else, I mean, everything else can go ahead and add to it. But if you were going to bet on a patient, where is their pain mostly coming from? According to the evidence, and I can tell you from thousands of patients that we've treated in the AAFE, it is muscles first. Then you go ahead and tack everything else that's out there. And that includes medical referrals, that includes dental referrals, occlusion, all the different things that especially the many of you dentists have been doing for, for months. But Brox's appliances, we never give that first. I mean, absolutely not. Yeah, she's had all kinds of things. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't just what you saw in that video. She said, you, you name it, and she's pretty much had it all uh, for all of this here. All right, now let's get to PDO threads. PDO threads, how in the world are PDO threads going to be a part of this uh, scenario here? Hang on, let me just get this to go. Oh, yes, PDO threads, smooth PDO threads, as you're going to see. Um, uh, they are going to be part of it because this is polydoxinone threads. We use it as a collagen biostimulator. Many of you have been on other programs uh, of ours here, and we use it as a collagen biostimulator. It builds collagen and elastin in patients here. It's a hypodermic needle. This one happens to be, this can be 29 gauge, 31 gauge, and it's this thread is threaded into it, comes out in the loop uh, for that. And we're going to show you, we've shown you many times how to use it for collagen in biosimulation, which is what you're seeing right here, um, because what does it do? A PDO is a polydoxinone thread. It's a suture material. It's been around for 50 years, and it's a very slowly absorbable suture material. But when we use it for aesthetics and now therapeutics, we go ahead and uh, you place it in in the subdermal plane, and all of a sudden, as it breaks down slowly over a few weeks, the body's natural reaction is to build this beautiful collagen and elastin, which is what you see growing above the threads here. Top layer is epidermis is skin uh, for that. Neocollagenesis, revascularization of skin. The skin looks great. The skin feels great. And the same kind of mechanism. However, we are going to use it because it does come in something that's a sharp needle and we're going to use it for trigger points. That same application that you saw before where we gave botulinum toxin, Botox, we are here are going to go ahead and deliver a PDO thread in there because what are we trying Trying to do with them to go ahead and break up that that uh, trigger point, which is a point in the muscle that's referring all this pain. If we break it up and you know with a sharp needle and, and start to break it up, the body heals up, the pain goes away. That's the mechanism that's been around again, like I said, for 50 years. Now, if we put some PDO threads in there, not only do we break it up, but put some PDO threads in there for that, that helps the body repair itself with college biostimulation that is a fantastic combination and we're going to show you a little video on how that works and then we're going to talk about patient fees or you know uh, for all this or the impact on your practice uh, by delivering all of these things but so far you see it you're making people look great and feel great or feel great and look great all at the same time here the only warning I have for you on PDO threads is going to be make sure you use an FDA cleared class two, no origin, proper packaging. There are about 20 companies on the U.S. market uh, when it comes to PDO threads, and there are only three that I would consider using, maybe a fourth one, and that is from a legal and FDA, and this is my opinion, the AFE's opinion on this, uh, to go ahead and do that, VSoft Lift, Nova Threads, and Mint. The other ones... Uh, unknown origin, improper packaging. We've contacted these companies. By the way, I'm happy to to uh, to redo this uh, this uh, this uh, depending on if I could get information from some of the uh, companies. But some of them say we won't tell you where they come from. Well, that's a big red flag. And anything that's FDA listed class one, not advised. Don't use a blank package with a little sticker on it. There are proper proper packaging guidelines to make. Make sure you're getting the real product. And by the way, if there's any problem and the patient has a, a complaint, you're the one that's fined, as you can see some examples here. Not the not the company, which will be long gone. Any company that tells you that they are only FDA listed class one, and that's all you need, or we applied for class two and it takes a long time. It doesn't, okay? Or, or you know, and I know that some of these companies have told me this for years that they they applied for it and you can use it in the meantime. Absolutely not uh, for that. So it's your license on the line. You are the one responsible. So you. You've really got to go ahead 
and make sure that uh, you know what you're doing. So we would only consider three of them, but the one one we use the most is VSoft Lift for simply, uh, it produces the most collagen with the least amount of threads. And that's what you want. You want the maximum effect, the mass, maximum collagen biostimulation with the least amount of threads, not the most. And you would need, you know, three to four of Nova threads, four to five of Min PDO. And again, that's not me saying it. You, uh, you're, uh, you know, they show, these companies show their, their cases before and after. And this is the kind of stuff that they show, by the way. And if you need this many PDO threads, you are using the wrong PDO thread. And also the, the one on the left, you got to be, you have to be insane, insane to place this, uh, you know, underneath there. And I, I, I just got a picture of it uh, today. I saw it online. Someone put out all these PDO threads, and I think it was a Nova Threads case, uh, on their tray. Just open all the packages, put them all on the tray, and then was using their bare hands to pick them up and show, and show the camera what the they are these are sterile <laughs> why are you not wearing gloves okay you've got to treat these are all you, you've got to have some sterile technique is all i'm saying and it was one of their trainers and it's just boggles my mind for all of that but let's go to this how are we using it for uh, therapeutics well this has been pretty well studied, and it's called PDO thread embedding. Um, again, it's real, it is related to acupuncture, uh, but it's a lot more than that. And this is just a meta-analysis, meta uh, and there are lots of other papers on this as well here. But this real, we've incorporated this a couple of years ago. Let me tell you, this really adds to the pain relief, to the repair and healing of the, um, of the um, actual trigger points, and we love it. So let me show you a video, and then we're going to go uh, to the impact on the practice, and then we will answer questions, um, and then uh, and, th and then some extra content for those of you who want to stick around. All right, here we go. Trigger point therapy here with smooth PDO threads. We're using ethyl chloride to ice the area really, really well, and we are going to go ahead and target the trigger point, which we've already identified in the muscle. Now you see that this is much different than using it for aesthetic purposes because we are going to try to target and go deeper into that muscle right through that trigger point and we are going to put a number of these in because we want to get this trigger point from a number of different areas here and why smooth PDO threads and you do a 360 turn and you take them right out and that leaves the PDO thread behind because the PDO thread will start to break down and that is going to generate some of the body's inflammatory response and collagen and elastin production to heal that uh, trigger point that is in the muscle there. There. And this is obviously the trapezius muscle, as many of you know, um, but we'll do this with other muscles too. But here's the technique, really pick up that muscle, isolate it, and you're gonna, going to go in from an angle deeper than normally for aesthetic purposes, right through that trigger point. That's going to leave a PDO thread behind, and that is what is going to really potentiate the healing, and we're getting better results now more than ever with trigger point therapy, breaking it up with a 20-22 gauge uh, needle tip and also delivering botulinum toxin at the same time to relax the muscle. But now adding this adds a whole new dimension to this for quicker healing as you are as patients see. And that is the trapezius muscle here. Now let's go ahead and show you splenius capitis muscle here, just like this. Again, isolate the muscle here. We've already identified the trigger point. These can be a little bit uh, spicy uh, for patients here, but again, look at the angle that we're going in. We are going deep into the muscle, into that trigger point, going through this, and this is something that has been around for a while. It's called PDO threading, if you want to go ahead and look it up. But we're using the VSoft Lift brand, by the way. This is going to produce the most collagen, which is what what we want that gets the best response from the patient and it's going to get the best rebuilding of the the trigger point which is almost like a piece of scar tissue is what it feels like and it's pretty tough and as we break it up with uh with the regular trigger point therapy and then add some botulinum toxin then we are going to go ahead and add 
these uh, PDO threads in there, and that's going to really help with the healing of these trigger points there. But make sure you isolate the muscle and hold it because it'll also make it easier to get this through. We'll use smooth PDO threads. We'll use twisted PDO threads. Um, either one of those will work fine. We usually use a combination. The twisted PDO threads will get us more of the PDO thread in there, but it's going to have a different feel. It's going to go in. It needs a little bit more push as it goes in. So you need to add this to your practice right now and get a fee certification train today and and we'll answer questions on PDO threads because there are a bunch of them uh, in terms of what we just showed in just a few minutes. So let me just uh, continue on here. And for those of you who want to stick around, I'm going to show extra content of uh, lifting PDO threads for also myomodulation. So for those of you who want to stick around, um, because we did kind of put a time uh, limit on this for the normal, but most of you probably want to watch it because we'll be there pretty shortly anyway. All right. So anyway, for this collagen biostimulation, if you were doing it, now again, not necessarily for therapeutic, although you do get some myomodulation out of this as well, PDO threads, smooth PDO threads, and especially lifting PDO threads, but smooth PDO threads, they're not a commodity, and they have probably have the highest ROI of any other injectable going on right now, but this is a typical case, and this was three treatments, and this is her own collagen. So it's different than the dermal filler, which will only last about six months. Her own collagen will last a lot longer than this, right? I mean, that's exactly what you're doing. But PDO threads are fantastic, but V-Soft Lift by far. Only 20 V-Soft Lift uh, PDO threads, 10 on each side. There is not another PDO thread that gets that kind of collagen biostimulation, especially one that has got uh, FDA cleared class two, proper packaging, um, known origin, and all those things that uh, we require and many of you require just to stay safe uh, for all of that. So you can see this for yourself. I mean, the treatment time for these things are literally five minutes once you learn how to go ahead and do it. And by the way, if you want to learn how to do it, the AV has got the only live virtual training on uh, on smooth PDO threads. This is a CME certification uh, training course. It's like six to eight hours CME uh, for all of that. It includes all the AFI on demand certification training, a box of smooth PDO threads, and then there will be a Zoom session where you will do a hands-on training. The next one is June 12th, but you can go through all the on demand way before that and even practices on your patients there too, just with the on demand certification training. But if you want this certification, training the next one again is monday june 12th um it's these are small classes so they sell out weeks beforehand and you can save 500 dollars off for the next 24 hours at afevirtual.com and non-members non-afi members or not yet afi members uh can save it too uh afi members will save even a little bit more uh, with all of that so you can go to afevirtual.com this is the only one of its kind. No one else has got a real CME certification training that's a live virtual training because you can do it with this. And there's a tabletop uh, session with that, which is that Zoom session, but you'll find out more when you get to it there. And I will answer all PDO thread questions in just a few minutes. I just want to show you some amazing cases that have come in uh, to the AFE. This case, the, and this is from a great AFE member. His name is Dr. Rex Whiteman in the Atlanta area, and he had a patient just coming into his uh, practice for the first time. And she came in, and when, the, you know, when he did a, a, a medical history, everything, she has had all kinds of pain for a really long time. I mean, she checked off everything. She brought in literally a, uh, a two-inch thick file uh, with all these things. She has been to all kinds of surgical groups and all kinds of different places because of her pain. And this is the way that she, now this is not when she saw him. When she saw him, uh, he, she, she had, I mean, she just checks off everything uh, that is pain. But when she first saw him, she did not look like this. I'll show you in a minute what she looked like. This is her earlier that year, the first time that she came in. And she tells him this crazy, history of like you know 20 25 years of pain um she has had all kinds of different things done none of it helped uh for all of that and um this is earlier in the year before he saw her he saw her in like november time this is like february and she uh, said like you know she went to a, a new group it was a surgical group an oral maxillofacial surgical group and 
she she said like this is it if these people can't help me I, I literally may be thinking about suicide or something like that. I can't live with this pain anymore. So they said, yeah, you know, they did all kinds of things. And I'm not judging them. I never judge other people. I wasn't there. You weren't there. It's hard for us to judge, and I don't think it's a good practice anyway. Um, but this, wait till you see this. This is crazy. Um, so they said, yes, there's one more thing, a last resort, that we think is really going to help you. So she says she'll go for it. So she goes from this, and then the next slide is how she walked in to Dr. Rex Whiteman. She had, wait till you see this. I wish I could hear your response. She had a bilateral condylectomy, which... I thought they stopped doing in the 80s when I was being trained. Uh, this was a more of a common procedure. I mean, they liberal, literally gave her bionic jaws uh, for that. They said, it must be the pain's coming from your TMJs. Let's get rid of the condyle. Let's get rid of the TMJ and give you uh, a, uh, and this is a very radical surgery, which I haven't seen one in 20, 25 years, if not more than that, uh, for that. And, uh, the, yeah, here's the question. Again, it's not a matter of judging, but here's the question uh, for this. Was she better, was she worse, or was she the same after this? Now, only only one of those is is really an acceptable response for all of that. So, uh, but she was, and she wasn't better. Okay, and she even if she was the same, it was worse. And certainly, if it was worse, it was worse for this. But she finally healed up, and you know what? She's she's living with the pain, and she goes to see Dr. Whiteman just for like as a new patient. And he says, listen, I, I just took this course um, on trigger point therapy, and let me do an examination on you. And he does an examination on her, and he finds a whole bunch of trigger points. And you can see here is his treatment, and that's the AFI treatment form uh, that, that we use on this. And she had 94 units of Botox with a bunch of trigger points. And in the same appointment, she feels about 80% Better. Her head, her neck, her face, she can move her head from side to side. She thought, she literally thought it was a miracle. And Dr. Whiteman's like, hey, you know, that is one of the first times I'm doing this. This is pretty cool for this. No one had ever done a simple muscle examination. And again, the evidence says up to 85% of the oral facial pain, headaches, migraines, TMJ comes from muscle that's where you start. And literally, it changed this woman's life. He tweaked her a few more times uh, with a couple other appointments. She was completely free out of pain for the first time in 25 years. Let me show you this, and then we'll talk about uh, the impact on the practice and that kind of thing. This, uh, this young fella here, and this dentist, Dr. Meredith, she's from Baltimore, Maryland. She actually came to a uh, uh, one of our you know, Botox fillers, TMJ courses for that. And she brings this young man as a patient here. What's his story? And, and, she, and he literally had come in her office just for a cleaning, and she needed a patient, and he, he describes his whole story. He was a Marine. He had two tours in Iraq. Last tour in Iraq, he was, uh, you know, in a Jeep with, you know, or with a Hummer with six other of people in his uh, battalion there. They hit an IED, one of these roadside bombs. Uh, it flips over a few times. He's the only one that lives, gets airlifted to Germany, Terrible pain in the head and neck, as you might expect. He did some research about Botox for, uh, you know, for head and neck pain, oral facial pain, and applied to the VA who said, you know, you got to wait about a year before we decide whether or not you need it or not. And he's telling her this, and she's coming to the course. She says, you know what, why don't you come to the course? Well, you'll be my patient, and, and, and you know, we'll, we'll see what it is. And he came, he had 22 trigger points. Everybody in the course got to treat him pretty much. Because he just had so many for that. And again, from the first time for a few years, he starts to move his shoulders and neck side. He says, I can't believe this. There was not a dry eye in the place because he's such a, he's such a great, he's such a great, uh, you know, I'm an older, I'm older already. So to me, he's a kid. Uh, she's a kid. He's a kid. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, we love aesthetics. Everyone loves aesthetics, and it's great. You build people's self-esteem. But when you get someone out of pain, 
and you make them look good at the same time, it is a total game changer. And it is, I, we can just show you patient after patient. Look at this patient before, look at her after. You can just see in her face before that she is in pain. If you want to stick around uh, for some extra content, I'll show you her lifting PDO thread case, and you'll really see how she, she got uh, to that after for all that. But Botox, dermal filler, solid filler PDO threads, all of these patients were pain patients, but also got... A botulinum toxin for uh, to control the muscles. Fillers to go ahead for that myomodulation, put the muscles back and get them to function normally again and look great. PDO threads, smooth. Uh, for uh, for the stimulation, collagen biostimulation we talked about. Lifting, which I'll show you after in just a couple of minutes. Uh, lifting to lift everything up because there's no other way to lift that face uh, when you've done it. And then, you know, see, this young lady at 75 years young, uh, also there as well. Uh, is looks great and is pain free with all those things. So you got to start somewhere and actually go ahead. You've got to you've you've got to learn these. Not just and, and again when you start to learn for aesthetics, it's great. But there's a whole therapeutic part that's out there there as well. Like I said, I will answer some questions uh, in just a couple of minutes before the extra content, uh, real quick. But what's the bottom line? And we know this from years of studying AFI members. Again, we've got uh, thousands of AFI members taking taking courses and active AFI members, and we survey them all the time, whether they're a dentist, physician, nurse, nurse practitioner, or a PA. But the bottom line, I'm not going to take you through all the statistics here the last time we did this. The bottom line is AFI members who introduce Botox and fillers in their offices seen an average additional increase additional to whatever they were doing already of $32,500 of production a month. Some were doing much more, some were doing less. That's why this is an average, but that is very significant. That's three to four to five hundred thousand dollars more a year of additional production. Plus, it's the happiest part of your practice. Okay, people love getting this uh, as just about everything else. Great, Dr. Noli says pain and soul therapeutics. It's absolutely that, and she should know. She's a master uh, in. Um, uh, in North Miami Beach or that uh, along the, that area, uh, in uh, if you ever need uh, a great uh, uh, aesthetic and therapeutic injector and practitioner, there she's amazing. As are so many of our AFI members that are on right now uh, for all of this. That is a big increase. Now, when you, they added PDO threads, that went up by another thirty thousand dollars because PDO, PDO threads has got the highest ROI uh, right now in injectables and everything else that's out there. And certainly we work hard with all of our AFI members uh, to make them successful. And here's another example, aside from Dr. Noli, but I should get Dr. Noli's uh, numbers up here one of these days because she's a real success story too, as we have so many in the AFI. Uh, this guy, great guy, Dr. Bo Moreland. Um, he, he took a, just a level one Botox fillers and TMJ, February 2015. Immediate integration. He loves the therapeutic part. Um, and he's in a little town. I forgot where exactly. Exactly, he is in Louisiana or Alabama, I forgot, but he is the uh, Mecca. He is the center, okay, for hundreds of miles around him because he has really built up a practice to literally be, uh, he, I mean, he, he, he is the master, especially in oral facial pain. There's no one else doing it. He's got physicians. He's a dentist. He's got physicians that are uh, referring patients to him. And now in seven years, his monthly average went from 85 to 210K, built out a whole beautiful office for aesthetics, for a headache TMJ. Literally, he is a headache TMJ center. It's amazing what you can do. And, and yeah, again, these are all just tools. So let me just answer some questions. Let me just uh, get these announcements. I'll answer some questions and I'll go straight into the extra content for those of you who want. But let me, I promise I'd answer some questions. So let me do that. But first, a lot of you were asking about this again, so I'm showing it again. Lie, learn the new Micro Botox Precision Lip Flip Plus. Uh, and this is in a couple of weeks. It's only $79 now. It'll go up to $199. That's good through April 13th. There's the first 200 spots and a bunch of you grabbed spots uh, for that. Once it hits 200 spots, then the tuition goes up uh, for that. APWebinars.com and uh, the Precision Lip Flip 
People either love it or they don't get results. So why aren't they getting results and why isn't it predictable? We're going to show you the AFI way, exclusive treatment protocol of how to get the best lip flip using microbotox plus something else, which you will see when you get there. We'll talk about fee strategies, all that. So this is in two weeks. If you want a spot, grab a spot right now at the discounted price or you can pay the, the higher price. That's okay too if you want to wait it out. But no reason to wait it out. It comes with a 14-day replay, so you get that as well. So you don't have to, um, uh, you literally don't have to, you know, you can review it and really go through it again and again. But this is one of the highest requested uh, uh, things in aesthetics right now. And it doesn't take very long to do, but we'll show you how to price it accordingly there as well and how to do it correctly there too. So uh, go to afewebinars.com if you want that. We have a Gadaver course coming up in Fort Lauderdale, April 15th. If you want that, it's $1,000 off. Uh, go to afecadaverlab.com or afeating.com for that. Then there's also Scottsdale, Cleveland, uh, where we hope to see you there at some of these and there as well. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. I'll show that lifting PDO case uh, again after I answer some questions, afetraining.com. This is where you'll find it all about all these live patient certification uh, training courses. And that cadaver lab I just mentioned also comes with ultrasound training. So here, I'm just going to leave it here because a lot of you are saying, what are the upcoming dates again? Uh, what is it? So avdream.com, congratulations. About eight, uh, maybe eight or nine of you have already grabbed packages. So there are a couple left uh, for that if you want to grab it. Um, use AFI code, use that code, AFI500, for an additional $500 off uh, for gold packages and higher. And again, buy two, four, six, nine courses. You can use these now. You can use these a year from now. You can lock in that price. And I think that's the most important part is to lock in that price right now. Let me answer some questions. And that's, yes, I will show you um, some of these. A bunch of questions. I answered that. Do I have to worry about injecting the vasculature? Um, uh, you always have to worry about that no matter what you're uh, injecting. Um, but not so much a PO thread. You're never going to go ahead and have... Um, a, uh, a vascular occlusion or an event with PDL threats, other than a bruise uh, for all that. Great question, Julie. Um, do you actually feel a knot at the trigger point location? You'll definitely feel something. And again, if you've ever had a massage or given a massage and you feel that real tightness in, uh, you'll learn. You, you'll learn it. You'll learn it in training, and you'll learn it just by doing it. It definitely feels different. Uh, for sure, but you know it by their pain response. That's how you really know it, but it's much tighter when you're feeling through the muscle. And again, this just comes with time and experience, just like any physical therapist or massage, or if you get a massage, you can feel those type things. I will tell you right now, half of you through, uh, or more than half of you throughout this course have reached over to your trapezius, your shoulder muscle, and that one point that always bothers you that you're always pressing on to try to get some relief, or the same thing with uh, your temporalis muscle or master muscle that you always rub to try to get, to get some release. That's your trigger point right there. You've all got them. <laughs> when we first started giving this course, we were, we were afraid that people were going to have a hard time finding patients with trigger points. No problems. You get any medical or dental professional in the chair and just from other attendees at the course, they all want to be treated and they all got lots of trigger points and that means all of you there as well. Could you use electrotherapeutic point stimulation uh, for that or TENS units uh, for that to locate trigger points? Really not. You've got to feel it to locate it because again, when I locate a trigger point, I am I am going to really trigger it so that I I know exactly where the pain is going to there as well. That's how I know for uh, I have a real uh, trigger point and it's much easier to then isolate with my finger other than ETPS, which we've uh, we've we've played with everything, including that. It's you know it was you you weren't getting the same response. I, I want to know that I am injecting the place that literally is sending pain somewhere else. That's exactly what I want to go ahead and do. Great question, Karen. Good to see you on here. Is there an order for tox filler and PDO threads uh, for that? Um, tox, uh, I will generally do tox and PDO threads. I can do it the same appointment, let everything settle down, let's see what it looks like, and then I can add filler later on. Right. And that's a, really a great question. That's a pretty that, that's a pretty perceptive question, Karen. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go ahead and 
uh, take care of some acute pain first, and that's what you get with the Tox, the Trigger Point Therapy, and PDO threads for that. Then once it settles down, then I can go ahead, especially with facial muscles, uh, add the filler back in after the Tox has taken effect um, to get that muscle to work normally. So you're right. There is a two-pronged approach, and that's I really you're really thinking this through, and I appreciate that. Um, for the most part, we do like to use for the PDO thread a screw-type uh, smooth thread. A lot of you picked up on that because you could see the thread was wound around the outside of the uh, hypodermic needle that it comes in all sterile uh, for that, and that takes a little more push to get through. But yeah, because I have more thread for that. Dorota loves VSoft. Um, she absolutely loves them, so thank you for that. Yeah, there's so many people that have switched to VSoft or started out using VSoft uh, for all of that. Yeah, most of these patients have had the whole ball of wax uh, for all of that. Yeah, use the same product uh, for Smoker's Line. Perlane is the old name. It's now called uh, Restylane Lift. Uh, so that's what that is. More about lidocaine toxicity. Yeah, I mean lidocaine toxicity uh, is a real thing. I mean you've got you've got to you know you've got to know that uh, most dentists uh, know this or they need to be reminded every once in a while. Uh, lidocaine toxicity. If you're using uh, you know getting a patient numb over their whole mouth, you better not do it at one time. Uh, because an average size male can only take, you know, maybe eight to 10 dental carpules before they become toxic. It's the same thing here. You've got, you know, that's why we don't give, um, I mean, you're doing a trigger point therapy, you're giving it, we're also not using epinephrine, so the lidocaine gets absorbed fairly rapidly for all of that. So, you know, we're only giving lidocaine in one trigger point at a time, and it may take, you know, 20 minutes, an hour, but it generally, unless you're doing 10, 20 trigger, trigger points on a patient, at um at you know a half a cc each um you know that's when you start to get up to it uh so you may want to break it up into different appointments for all of that all right that is that i'm going to show let's go to the extra content for those of you who want to see it on lifting po threads but i will show this one more time so take a picture of this there's my email if you have questions if i didn't get to your question i hope i got to a lot of them um and afetraining.com so Grab a package, AP Virtual, the Smooth PDL Threads, Ultrasound, Cadaver Lab, Stat DDS, they get everything, then come for docs right from them. VSoft Lift, hands down the best, the best Smooth PDL Threads with the most collagen production. And also, as you're going to see, lifting PDL Threads uh, for that too. Wave Aesthetics is an Ultrasound and AFWebinars.com. So make sure you get on the Mitro Botox Lip Flip in a couple of weeks. All right, uh, extra content right now. Let's go to Lift. PDO threads. So now this is different. What you saw before were smooth PDO threads. These lifting PDO threads have got some, and again, we're going to use only VSoft lift because everyone else is going to need uh, four to five times the number of threads. Threads. You see these crazy, crazy, you know, lifting thread cases with, with which again, these other companies they show. I mean, they show proudly you need 20 on each side of the face. That's insane. I mean, I'm sorry to say it like that, but that's absolutely insane for that. But VSoft Lips has got a number of threads, and there are two kinds, really, in lifting PDO threads. There's a barb thread, which is what you see on top. This one's called a barb star. comes in various lengths, thicker skin, uh, thinner skin. And again, you, when you learn this, you learn how, what you need. And then the bottom ones are called molded PDO threads, also lifting threads. In their case, it's the arty line for that. Molded threads are stronger. Now, their, their regular thread, their barb star thread, is a lifting barb thread. And that's typically about 25% um, about stronger than any other lifting PDO thread on the market. And again, it's, it's by our testing, but it's more importantly, it's by the number that you need compared to the other threads. For every one of these, I need three to four or four to five of Mint or Nova threads uh, for this. And their molded threads are even stronger than that. And it's just a matter of the right patient, when do I really need uh, the super lifting thread, which is on the bottom? It's an anchor thread, as you can see, versus just a regular molded thread. This is all just about learning these kinds of things. So I just want to show you just a quick case. It's not a full, uh, it's not a full training on PDO threads, but this just going back to our whole pain and therapeutics and that kind of thing. So this patient I showed before her before and after, and I'll show it again. But just look at this patient. 
okay? She's standing up straight. Tell patients stand up straight, take pictures of them. Yet her head is tilted. Why is her head tilted? Because one side of her face is in constant spasm, and that's why it's tilted. And look how her eyes are small. And this is a face in pain. You don't have to be a genius to look at that. You just have to have little experience on learning it for that uh, one masseter, again, bigger than the other side. She has got headaches, migraines. I mean, the whole shebang. TMJ oral facial pain has been in pain for a number of years here for that. So now another, again, it's got myomodulation. We showed you what it means with fillers. Now it's about repositioning tissues. And when you reposition tissues with a lifting PDO thread, again, I'm just going to show you part of a case on that. You'll see the before and after, but then you'll quickly understand when you reposition tissues, because the layer that we're going to go ahead and and uh, grab with a lifting pedo thread is called the SMAS layer, which sits right on top of the muscle. When you pull that SMAS back, you pull the muscle back to its anchoring point. It functions normally. It, it then the whole face just is it is normal again, and they and that really helps their pain. And that's what myomodulation is all about. So here we go. Let me show you this uh, part of a lifting pedo thread case. Here we go. Let's go ahead and show you this great case on solid filler PDO lifting threads. And these are the V-soft lift threads. Let me catch you up on where we're at. Uh, we've already gone ahead and diagnosed this patient, mapped her out quite a bit. We gave her a little bit of anesthetic right at the entry hole that you see right there. And we used an 18 gauge pilot hole needle just to go ahead and, uh, and make a little hole in each direction that we're going. But let's go ahead, first of all, to the nasal labial fold direction here. What you're seeing here is a Comfortax microcannula being used to deliver local anesthetic, 2% lidocaine, local anesthetic, no epinephrine because it's not needed in this situation here. And we are pre-tunneling. This is one of the signature exclusive AAFE protocol techniques for solid filler lifting PDO threads. Uh, no one else has developed something quite like this. Uh, this really is specific to the AAFE. And the reason that we do this, and again, it's something you've got to learn with real certification training at an AAFE lifting PDO uh, live patient training. What we do with this is something called pre-tunneling. So we are going to use a specific Comfortox microcannula to go ahead and develop a small little tunnel that is in the right plane. Once you get in the right plane, then putting in your lifting PDO thread is going to be very, very simple here as you are going to go ahead and see. Plus, this is the most comfortable way to do this. Anybody that's ever or had or watched or been trained on PDO threads outside of the AAFE, uh, you realize quite quickly how painful this can be to the patient and you get a little jitterish that you're not sure that you want to actually treat patients like this. Now with this technique, it's amazing how comfortable patients are. You can see this patient is talking through this whole procedure. She's already had the other side done here. And what we're doing here is going to go ahead. She's, again, she's not numb. She's barely numb. She's getting numb now. But with the Comfortox microcannula, with the right flexibility and the right control, you can stay in the right plane. You can deliver anesthesia slowly but surely as you go ahead and pre-tunnel in this, in, this, in this technique. And all of a sudden, it's a different experience for everybody. And now we're going to go ahead and pre-tunnel the third tunnel here. Now let's talk about the way she's mapped out. She is mapped out to go ahead and lift uh, from the entry hole position to through the nasal labial fold, lift up that vector. And this is called a three vector technique. We're gonna come back later and do two vectors in her jawline. Then one, as you can see, goes all the way down to the marionette line. And then one is going to go all the way down to the jowl area. And that's the one we are pre-tunneling now with the Comfortox microcannula. It's not just a technique, it's, the, it's also the particular instruments that have been chosen for this that's what makes it so comfortable. That's what makes it so effective and so great. Now we're just delivering a little bit of 
anesthesia as we go ahead and retrograde this, uh, this injection here. You don't want to flood the area with a lot of fluid, otherwise your lifting PDO thread is not going to go ahead and get enough grab on the tissue here. And where are we at? We are at the subdermal plane, also right around the SMAS layer here, so we can really grab that uh, area there. Now, watch these VSoft lift by a new bio.com uh, threads go into position. Patient has been talking throughout this entire way. You've never seen a PDO treatment like this before where the patient is so comfortable, it doesn't flinch at all. Why? Because she's gotten the proper numbing and this is gonna to go to place easy. Why? Because we've pre-tunneled with this. It's all about being in the right, uh, bringing in the right plane. The only way to be in the right plane is to get trained to make sure you are there. And when you are in the right plane, it goes in so nice and simply there. Now, what's really another another exclusive part of the AFE technique is you see a lot of other techniques where they're pushing, pushing, pushing on that PDO thread, and it's doing a lot of damage as you're going ahead and pushing here. Here, we're doing what we call the curtain over the curtain rod technique. Most of the work is being done, in this case, by the left hand as we are very well controlled with that PDO thread and the, and the cannula that it sits in, and we are pulling the tissue up over that PDO thread. Nicely, easily, carefully, take your time. There's plenty of time to do this because you're gonna get it right. And because we've pre-tunneled, that's make this, made this so easy here. And there goes the first thread, as you can see, has come through this. Now, let's go to the second thread. We're just gonna go all along that pre-tunnel position that we've uh, created with the Comfortox microcannula and the local anesthetic here. Nice and easy, there's no rush. There's no reason to do this fast. Patient, as you can see, still very comfortable as we go through this. Now we're just lifting the tissue as we onto the cannula, a slight push with the right hand in this case in the cannula, but again, most of the work is being done by the left hand here. And you can see, always checking to make sure we're on the right plane. We always must know where the tip of the uh, of this cannula for this VSOF lift thread is at all times. And that is really, uh, really important. Let's talk about the VSOF lift. It's a very, it's the best by far, uh, very, uh, very, I want to say exclusive PDO thread because it's the only thread that we use in the AAFE trainings. What is so good about the VSOF lift? Why is it better than any other lifting thread available? Number one, lifting power. It's about 20% stronger than any other thread. Number two, and this is really important, is it has got a a special coating, a special polymer coating on this, and it takes longer to go ahead and break down. What does that mean? We're going to get an immediate visible result with the actual lifting barbs that are on this thread. But the added result is, as these things start to break down, over time, the body's natural reaction is to produce collagen. These take a little longer to break down, thereby they lift better, they lift for longer, and they, they go ahead and produce more collagen because a little bit of extra length for it to break down. And that combination results in the absolute best lift here. And now we're going along that nasal labial fold, and you can see we're lifting it up there. You can see the immediate result as we've already done. This is the third one coming out. This one is a little bit tricky. And like I said, you'll learn this in training. How do you get around that cheek? Because there's a little bit of a curve, but you can see it wasn't a challenge primarily because of the pre-tunneling. Pre-tunneling in the right plane, that sets your VSOF lift thread in the right plane. The best thread, the best cannula, the best technique all together produce the best results. And you can see how much more lifted this is than when we started here. So it's time to add this to your practice. It's great with Botox and fillers. It's a must have, and it is really time for you to get AFE certification live patient trained today. All right, let's go back to the patient here so you can see um, well, this is amazing. Look what she looks like here just from the side. And again, she's in her, in her late 20s, 
but has been in pain for a long time. Now you can imagine that things are going to work a lot better um, now that things have been repositioned and really pulled up there as well. Now let's take a look at her in the before and after here. And this is just from the side view as you can go ahead and see. And by the way, her cheek has been repositioned. The muscles have been repositioned. They're going to be a lot more efficient. They're not going to go back uh, as quickly to have pain or anything else. Doesn't mean the stress in her life has gone away, but it's been mitigated with botulinum toxin, dermal fillers, and PDO threads, and that's how you get this kind of result there as well. A look at the after now compared to the before. Again, the before, we just tell them to stand straight up, and however they naturally stand straight up, look at the tilt of the head on the left side of your screen, look at the right side of your screen when everything is back to normal or within normal limits and she's out of pain, her eyes, I mean, her eyes just look more alive. Okay, they're a little bit bigger. She's not tilted. Or, you know, her, her masseters are definitely down a little bit. She, could she use some more? Probably can use even a little bit more for all that. That's amazing. And again, it's not just neurotoxin anymore uh, for that. Not just neurotoxin and trigger points. But again, as you go through your journey, your aesthetic journey, and you learn uh, neurotoxin, you learn fillers, you learn PDO threads, they're great for aesthetics, fantastic for aesthetics, and you need all three. You cannot have total facial aesthetics without lifting PDO threads, smooth PDO threads, fillers, and uh, neurotoxin as well, but they all have a role when it comes to uh, therapeutics there as well here. So I'll take any final questions too. Again, all training questions, congratulations. Most of these packages are gone, but see if you can snag the last one or two that are out there so we can't wait to work with all of you that uh that have signed up and again you can lock this in you can take these a year from now you can take them tomorrow or as soon as you can get into a course you'll start on the on demand right away so a a if 500 go to afetraining.com say 500 on gold or higher but uh, we can't wait to work with all of you uh, for that. And let me just see if there are any other questions. What do we have against epinephrine? A few of you want to know. Nothing except it is myotoxic. So again, if I'm treating a trigger point, trigger point, by the way, if I can only get something with epinephrine, that's okay. I'll get it with epinephrine uh, for sure. But uh, my, if I can get it, because you know, you you all know we've all had supply chain issues a little bit with that. Go to statds.com. They've got bacteria static saline in stock. They've got uh, lidocaine one or two percent without epinephrine. They've got with epinephrine. I mean, go go chair. They usually don't put it on their website because otherwise. Um, there's a run on it, and they probably limit it because there is still a little bit hard to get, but you can certainly go there. Nothing ends up in effort other than it's myotoxic, which only means it'll irritate the muscle. If I can, if I get, if I have something that doesn't use it, even better uh, for all of that. So with that, I think, let's see, answered that, answered that. Um, let's take a look. I think we got it all. So thank you so much for being on, everybody. And we really do appreciate you being on with us. There is your resource slide again. My email, the AFI's email, uh, afitraining.com. Always check it for the best tuition specials. AFIvirtual.com. That is that smooth PDO threads. Virtual training, CME certification, uh, uh, so you the, the full course that's there, AV Ultrasound, AV Cadaver Lab, uh, StatDDS.com for everything with Comfortox, VSoft Lift is the, the by far the best PDO thread that's out there uh, for the reasons I've discussed so far. Nothing else even comes close for that minimal, maximum effect minimum amount of threads, and that's what you want if you were the patient, that's for sure. Uh, and certainly your patients want that too. And always check out avwebinars.com. Those of you that have signed up already, the rest of you go there, micro Botox lip flip in a couple of... Um, couple of weeks and you can save a lot of money on the tuition if you sign up now so go ahead and grab it thanks for being on everybody no matter what kind of holidays you have coming up happy holidays wonderful time of the year springtime enjoy all of that we are here to help make you successful so continued success to all of you we will talk to you all again real soon take care everybody